There you go. It takes a village. Taco Village. So I want to thank you all for coming tonight. And we want to welcome Mayor Omira Andino and Senator Shelley Mayer, our cooking elves here. They're going to be sharing some holiday favorites. <laughs> and so I'm going to be handing the program over to them. Hello, everyone. I am very excited to be in our Senator's um, kitchen. So this is Shelley Mayer, you guys probably all already know. And um, she has graciously agreed to let us use her home so that we could just share our holiday traditions. Um, you guys know I'm Puerto Rican and Shelly is Jewish. So she's going to talk a little bit about some of her ha holiday and family traditions. Oh, and Lee is coming and, in. Uh, My husband we have is, Santa. You know, Santa's here. <laughs> <laughs> he's not cooking, but. He's but I, my holiday tradition consists of tasting. Yeah, uh, so I, I am a taster. Okay. So, so, so I want to talk. So I'm, I'm going to be making um, a sweet potato casserole. It's an easy, easy dish. Anybody can make it. Hudson, you're going to try it, I'm sure. And then I'll let um, Senator Shelley Mayer tell Shelley, you what she's Shelley. or Shelley. What is Shelley going to make? He is tasting. So I am making brisket, which is something you might have on Hanukkah. And uh, I, I have one that I'm going to make uh, and one that is already made so we can enjoy it afterwards. And um, because Lee is not Jewish and comes from a different tradition, I brought some of his mother's uh, special Christmas wear, which is this beautiful Christmas punch bowl that uh, we brought from his parents' nice. house. And we'll be having some festive punch when we get to eat uh, with the real beautiful Christmas Christmassy uh, decorations. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the beautiful little cups. These are the cups. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. So ready? So we're going to get started. Um, and I also want to give you guys, I'm going to show you guys a treat. Um, in the Puerto Rican tradition, we make pasteles for the holidays. And uh, does anybody know what pasteles are? So I'm going to show you, I actually have some cooking now, um, but it's basically, it's uh, green bananas and some root vegetables. Some people use um, yuca, if you know what yuca is, or cassava, and uh, you cook the meat, either pork or chicken. Some people have vegetarian, it's just chickpeas. You cook that for hours and hours, it's so delicious. And then you wrap it in banana leaves and you boil it. Like a tamale. Kind of like a tamale. And um, I want you to taste that. It's oh, really delicious. So we're to. cooking that in advance. It's been uh, prepared in advance. My mom did that. Um, so we're going to get started. We'll start cooking. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing a bit. And then um, I'll turn over to Shelly and she'll tell you a little bit. But just so you guys know, I make my sweet potato casserole with roasted potatoes. Shelly, I don't boil the potatoes because it's them. water. It's like it's you don't want water to be absorbed in the potatoes. So so no, um, no boiling. I don't boil. I roast them. So I roasted these in advance. Whole, and you don't peel them. Before. I don't peel them. I just throw them right in the oven for about half an hour. I check to see, depending on how big they are, if they're if they're if a knife goes through, then they're good. If they're not, I keep them another fifteen minutes. So depending on how big they are, forty five, uh, thirty to forty five minutes. Um, I will now peel these, and then I'm going to mash them. That's my first step. So while I'm doing this, I'll let Shelly tell you how she starts her brisket. So um, one thing about brisket that I learned over the years is in the old days, when my grandmother taught me to cook, they, they made a different cut of brisket. It was called second cut. It's very hard to get now unless you go to a kosher, kosher butcher, but it's much better because it has more fat on it. Now we've gotten to this meat with less fat which is not as good and not as delicious but um i don't have a second cut brisket i have a first cut brisket so you are going to put salt and pepper on it and then you put this brisket right in the pan to brown it on both sides and after you do that you're going to add all these uh vegetables and but more important liquids because the whole point of a brisket is it it needs to cook a long time and it cooks in liquid. Mm -hmm. And once it cooks for about three hours, which I'm not going to do on our show, <laughs> um, then it gets really tender. But it has to, I've made it and made a mistake where I didn't cover it with enough 
tomatoes and wine and other mm -hmm. liquids. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a wonderful recipe from this book, Jewish Cooking in America by Joan Nathan. I'm gonna um, get the recipe for everyone. It was very close to the way uh, my grandmother taught me to make it when right. I was growing up. And is this similar to a pot roast? A pot roast is a brisket, but brisket in a sort of a like Eastern a European Jewish tradition is a little different. Um, you can make a pot roast in many different ways, mm -hmm. and they're not all the same, but mm -hmm. yes, it's the same cut of meat. Same cut of meat, okay. And just so you guys, if for those of you who've been to my classes, I always have a garbage bowl to uh, put everything in, keep the kitchen somewhat clean. So uh, just so you know, I'm, I use around three to four pounds of um, sweet potato. So I'm going to peel these up and um, then I'll mash it. And it is so simple once this is all mashed up, you just put all the other, you know, delicious holiday condiments in there, like cinnamon and nutmeg, butter, and butter, of course. This is not for those of you who are trying to lose weight. Just forget about that. <laughs> not happening here. This is the holidays. Enjoy. Is that why our good kid never tastes like grandma? Yes. <laughs> It is hard. It is very hard to get a second cup brisket, which I suspect your grandma got, mine did. And also, it's hard to find uh, sort of the right cups. I've yeah. had to practice. And I've made lots of mistakes. And that's one thing about cooking. Yeah. It's easy to make mistakes. And um, it's such a pleasure to cook that. And it's um, okay to make mistakes. Yeah, right? okay. so okay. it's okay. Um, Elaine, have you missed any questions or flooding? Um, yeah, Elmira, I just wanted to mention, you sound a little muted. Is something in front of the, the microphone where the computer is? I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, did you put something in front of the microphone, maybe the bowl, or it just sounds a little bit low, a little bit more muffled than when we started? Okay. Yes. I think I put this here. Yes. Okay. Better. Is that yeah. better? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so yes, we had, I think um, maybe you answered that. Oh, someone would like you to recommend a local butcher, if you have a local butcher. There's a wonderful- and I think Kelly, you saw that why our, that's why our brisket never tastes like grandma's because of those, those okay. yes. very good point. There is a wonderful, uh, there's not very many kosher butchers left. I live in Yonkers right near Tuckahoe and on Central Avenue, very close to, not far from Tuckahoe Road. Um, there is a, a, a lovely kosher butcher where you can get hmm. lots of these kinds of things. But, you know, just like uh, whereas other kinds of food, like maybe access to Puerto Rican mm -hmm. um, ingredients is easier to get now, ingredients of the old Eastern European Jewish style cooking are, are a little harder to find yeah. in Southern Westchester. But yeah. that doesn't stop us. We yep. just roll ahead. Um, there is, I mean, I do have, friends who actually go to Jewish friends, just yeah. so you know, who actually go to Arthur Avenue. Yes. Yeah, so a butcher it. there. <laughs> um, they said we go to the Italians to get our Italian, our well, Jewish absolutely. tradition. You know, that's language. one of the lovely things Great. when you're here in New York that people elsewhere don't really understand that we have this wonderful mix of yeah. cooking and here, let me get you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Gina is sharing that Riverdale may have good kosher places as well. So there is a very good, there's okay. a good kosher butcher in Riverdale, so you're right. So there I have it. I have just peeled the two potatoes and I'm going to mash them. Mash them up. And then we're going to put all the fatty yumminess into them. <laughs> yeah, I like the way you talk about it. <laughs> it's delicious. Sounds so great. Oh, wait, now I want to show you guys something really cool as I'm mashing this up. Um, so someone sent me a gift. And I don't know who it is. I'm hoping that someone that someone would reveal themselves at some point. But I got this in the oh, mail. Let's see. Cooking with Mayor and oh, Dino. You know, Mayor Omaira. Oh, I love it. Who is sent that you that? I have no idea. That's so, amazing. If anyone knows who sent me this, please let me know. I would like to thank them. Properly. That's just fun stuff that I get from the residents. I have like, they're just such a, we have such a loving 
giving community, Shelly. Well, you you and Tuckahoe. <laughs> you do, and and I want to say to the Tuckahoe Library, this is such a wonderful idea, and I represent all you know, seventeen communities with seventeen different libraries, and I want them all to adopt this cooking, because it's well, I asked the guests that are watching, but I, it sounds like it's fun. And you learn something and you have a nice time and you enjoy the library. Yeah, maybe we can have like a mayor's cook off. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Omira, I think you mentioned that before about having some kind of a cook off. And yeah. we get this is one of our most popular programs. The cooking programs, okay. time and again, are very, very popular. So we're just so glad you could be a part of it. Very, very cool. Okay, well, just on mine, I've yep. added now um, a bay leaf. Uh, a sprig of fresh thyme and uh, rosemary, about two cups of, of red wine, not a fancy, regular, not expensive one, and uh, a can of tomatoes or what I have left from the can of tomatoes, just so there's enough liquid on top so that it, the, the brisket does not dry out. That is the biggest risk you have. And then because it's a delicious cut of meat, but it does need to cook with a lot of liquid on it. Okay. Now, so, now I'm going to bake it. So now I'm going to put into the potatoes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put um, how much butter do I usually use? So uh, a quarter cup of melted butter. And I will send the, I will send the recipe to Elaine so that way you guys have measurements if you want. Uh, we're going to have three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. So I'm going to actually measure that out so that it's pretty accurate. You need it. You're, when you need to come in the oven, I can yep. find out. Okay. Yeah. We're going to need, put in um, half and half. So oh, again, so nice. I, you know, some people use just milk. Others use orange juice, which I do not like at all. And I'm always looking for ways to make these kinds of holiday dishes. Would you mind um, looking that for like 10 seconds? Sure. Uh, looking to make these holiday you know, dishes, uh, sometimes more decadent and just creamier. So I play with it and you can do, you can, you can keep some things out. You can add, uh, you might have some, some spices that you like. Did someone say something? You know, we're gonna just call him if he wants to. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? Okay, Norma, we can hear you over here. Um, I'll put one egg in there just to hold it together. I like to beat the egg. Some people just throw the egg in. Or it's not the same to me. Did you learn from your mother? So this I did learn from my mom. Uh, because she, my mother liked uh, the sweet potatoes. She would just bake them yes. you know, for Thanksgiving and the kids would never eat it. And so this is not a, a traditional Puerto Rican dish, but it became one in my family. Uh, so for every holiday, like I'm tasked with making sweet potato casserole. And I didn't make it on Thanksgiving and people were upset. And you don't put marshmallows on top? No marshmallows. This is going to come, the uh, topping is going to be pecans, oh, brown okay. sugar. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So let's put that, put that in there. Yep. This is half yep. and half? Yeah. Yep. So well, Myra the... came with all her own ingredients, everybody. <laughs> I do have half and half. Mm -hmm. I figured, you know, Shelly must be busy. She doesn't have time to shop. For I all do of this shop stuff. and I do <laughs> Especially when my grandkids are here. I have a cute picture that I took out for today. I have five grandchildren, all six and under. But this is me cooking at uh wow with three of Aww. them. Aww. That's beautiful. I cook with all of them. I try to uh, show them what I was so fortunate mm. to learn. And so many of us are fortunate to learn from our parents and grandparents. I learned from my grandmother and uh, so they're excellent bakers and they're they're very good at paying attention for most of the time. They lose patience. Okay, I did forget one thing. What? Vanilla, vanilla extract. Do you I have, have any? any? Yes. yes. Uh, there's somebody else so, to come in. So I use um, cinnamon, uh, nutmeg, 
So now my nutmeg, I like to, to uh, grate myself. You have a grater? Yes, I do. Like this. Oh, my <laughs> Myra, I have a grater. Shelly's like, I have a grater. You don't need to bring that. Um, so I like to do that because the the ginger, uh, the nutmeg one, it's just the powder that sits in in your cupboard. It's just not as potent. So usually I'll do around a teaspoonful. I mean an eye eyeball, but if you want to measure out, you can. Uh, ginger is very strong, so I'm careful with it. Nutmeg. I mean nutmeg, sorry. So I'm a little careful with that. And then. Um, I use about a That's tablespoon delicious. of cinnamon. And I'm eyeballing, but it's about that. A tablespoon, a teaspoonful of vanilla extract. And I've been doing this long enough to kind of know what, you know, how much that is, but you should you can eyeball. I'll give you the right measurement. And then I have two secret ingredients, which is pumpkin pie spice. And truth be told, I love the Trader Joe's brand of the pumpkin pie spice. So somehow their the proportions that they use, you know, for cinnamon and the ginger and the lemon peel um, appeal right. to me. They're just right. So I put in about half a teaspoon of that, and then um, a dash of ginger. And you know, the key thing with this is that you just taste. If you feel you want more, yeah, let's do that. If you feel you want more or less of something, then you play with it. Um, but it's pretty forgiving and it's all according to your taste. So let's see here. Yep, I think that's good. Up a bit. Looks fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna use, I'm so the brisket is in the oven for three hours. We're sort of finished with that. It's easy to do. And you do have to. Yes. Yeah. Is it ground ginger? No. Uh, yes, you use ground ginger. Yes, I noticed. That. I use ground ginger, but. Um, I have used um, the, the root, the ginger root, and I would, I'll puree it and put it in. Oh, you can but also grate it. You can grate it, but yeah. I want you to try it. Okay. Let's see what you think. I know. I love sweet potatoes. But I love this. What could be bad? Right. What could be bad about it? <laughs> but it's a holiday dish, right? It's not right. A it's a, mm. isn't that good? Delicious. Mm. So. I wish you guys could taste it. And when we when we do this in the library, I always yes. we have a little party afterwards, and everyone gets to taste. But unfortunately, times have changed a bit. Can you show it? Can you lift it up a little bit just to give a little peek? Yeah. Looks like beautiful. Oh, that looks lovely. Yeah, it really does look see. delicious. How it looks. Yep. So then. We're going to put this into a, a Pyrex butter dish. It or nope, you don't need to butter it. What is the base of that thing? I was late. What is oh, the base? It's sweet potato. Roasted sweet potato. Roasted sweet potato. So I roasted okay. the sweet potato for 30 minutes to 40, 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. We will be following up with the recipes. We'll be getting that out to everybody who attended okay. tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we're going to put this into a, this is like 13 by nine dish, Tupperware dish. You just throw that all in there or a smaller dish even, but this is fine. What did you make in the other shows in there? I got to go back and look. Oh. So what have I made? I've made um, empanadas. Oh. Um, I've made um, butternut squash chicken soup for the winter. Oh, good. Sounds Remember good. I've made uh, Puerto, what I call Puerto Rican quesadillas. Do you guys remember that? With um, I put sweet plantain in them. Oh. And they became Puerto Rican. Because that's yes. what Oh, Myra <laughs> was shocked to find that I have, I have plantain here. I, I'm a Oh, wow. <laughs> so I walked in and I said, wow. Oh, we got to shut this off if I said it. No. <laughs> when we put in the, um, when we put this in, I was surprised. I said, Shelly, you have, you have plants? Platanos, we call them platanos. So I, I um, put this in the dish. I just sort of spread it out. Okay. Put this to the side, and then we're going to make the topping for it. I'm interested in the topping. Yeah. So I just need another. Is this mobile? Yes. Can I borrow that? Yes. And it's really easy. 
Um, you want to have about three quarter cup of uh, brown sugar. You know what, you can help me out and yes. melt that. Mel melt, truly melt? Yes, truly melt. Maybe like a little bit that's left in there so it's not too hot. Yeah. Okay. So three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. And we need uh, three quarters cup of pecans. If you don't like pecans or you're allergic, you can use uh, walnuts. People love walnuts. I love pecans with it. So you put um, about the same thing. And chopped pecans are better. Yeah, but because whole is really good. So these are kind of chopped. If you buy them whole, I sometimes I'll buy them whole and I'll just chop them up myself. Um, and then I'm just put that in there. No and then you want um, yeah, I'm trying to think your, your recipe. Yep. Half a cup, butter. half a cup of uh, flour. Oh, flour. Did you mm -hmm. bring that? Yep, I did. Oh, I have flour. I know, I know. And then you want a little cinnamon and nutmeg with some melted butter. You just mash that all up with your fingers. And I have to say that using pumpkin pie spice in this really makes a difference. I, mean, I don't know if you could yeah. tell. It really, really made a difference yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. your butter. Good. So that is good. So now here, I'm just gonna mix this all together. The sugar, the flour, nothing that needs to be done exact. How long did you say that together? Oh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. Oh, sorry. Okay. Mix it up yeah. in there. And then you're gonna put some butter in there and you're going to sort of crumble it with your fingers. Oh, okay. Kind of hot still. It's okay, we'll do it anyway. Yeah, kind of hot, but it's usually I'll melt it, but then I'll let it cool, but we don't, in the we interest say, of time, yeah. We say we have asbestos hands. Right. <laughs> many, many cooks have. So you put them the right- The cinnamon in there already? Cinnamon the, is in? The cinnamon, I, yeah, I put cinnamon and pumpkin pie spice. It's cinnamon. already in there. Yeah, it's already in there. Okay. So that's it. You just sort of leave some chunks of the, the flour and the sugar, you know, come, they, they like sort of chunk up. You want to okay. leave that. Okay. That really um, crisps nice when it's in the oven. So that's it. You leave that that way. You just okay. pour it on top in no kind of fancy way. Just dump it in there, oh, great. pretty much. Oh, top of the thing, on top of the. On top oh, of the oh, sweet okay. Potato. Yeah. Okay. And on top of the sweet potato, you put it in the oven at 350, which you already preheated for about 20 minutes. You check it. Everything is already cooked pretty much, other than the, the uh, flour on top. So you want that to cook. And then we'll check on it in a bit. That's how it's going to look. Here, Omaya. Okay. Looks delish. It does look delish. So we'll try it. <laughs> what do you mean we'll try it? We'll eat it. Yeah, we'll eat it. Do we need a timer? Um, so we can just, I usually, I'll just look at my phone and eyeball, eyeball. It's 6.30 oh. now. So like at 6.50, we'll take it out. Okay. Yep. And so now I want to show you guys the pasteles that my, my family makes for the holidays. It's one of our traditions. Okay, so Shelly is peeling her carrots now. After, after you cook this for three hours, you put peeled carrots and parsley in it for the next uh, 40 minutes or so until the carrots are cooked. And I'm going to take out our brisket soon. But one thing you do with brisket frequently is make it the day before. Mm. Then you put it in the refrigerator. And then the next day, then I did this already, you take the fat off, the congealed fat, and then you slice it against the grain. But you... They really recommend you make it the day before, which mm. I think is so funny. Most food you don't want to make the day before. But wow, okay. And brisket, then just... the day before is excellent. Okay, I'm going to try that. And I love brisket. It's <laughs> one of the most delicious meats to me. So now I want us to check out the pasteles. So I'm going to oh, bring yeah. that out. What is pasteles? So, and Denver, oh. 
Dara have to, they have to go get ready for bed. Thank you. Oh. Looking forward to seeing the recipes and finding the second cut brisket someday. Oh. So before Hudson goes, would mom allow by Hudson to tell his story of what he wants to do in Tuckahoe that he, that he talked to the board about at the last board meeting, two more board meetings ago? Sure. Yeah. Um, I Can we highlight Hudson, please, Elaine? Yes, just one second. Let me just um, remove the spotlight so I can find them. Just give me a minute. Sorry, I have to just change my screen. Here we go. Okay, here oh, you go, Hudson. With a NASA shirt, love it. So, so um, I, I wanna make a table where kids can join to, to like sell things like toys and and lemonade and 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 a few different things. That's a good and idea. What, and what do you want to do with money, Hudson? Yeah, why why is the table important to the community? Um because because we can sell things and 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 get money and 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 get and give it to and and give it to the and give it to like Omira and to the community. <laughs> that's wonderful. What a great idea. And that's a good idea. Excellent idea. I love so it. So sweet. Thank you, Hudson. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night, Mom. Thank you, That's a great idea. Wow. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so here we have Hudson, our eight-year-old, um, you know, resident, just thinking about how he could help his community. So I was very impressed with, you know, this idea that he came forward with. He said, you know, we can, whatever we needed to use to help to the help the community, he said we could use that money for that. That's so wonderful. isn't that beautiful? What an awesome idea. Uh, yeah. And so, right, we would do well. Right, so, he'll do well. So future's in good hands. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, so here we have the pasteles, and I'm just going to kind of show it to you guys. It looks like this. It's wrapped in banana, banana leaves. leaves that then my mom wrapped in um, paper, you know, like cooking paper. And so I'm going to show you. I'm going to unwrap one and let you see what it looks like. Who is that, Santa Claus? Santa, Santa Claus is Santa, there. Santa, yes. Santa has joined us. <laughs> that smells very good. So I'm mm -hmm. going to bring it down the camera so you can yeah, see. Yeah, very good. That's a good idea. And what is that now? That's the pasteles? This is pasteles, yep. And so you usually you'll cut the paper. Right? I cut the paper just to make it easier to unwrap it. And you... Your mother made these, like, and were they frozen? Oh, yeah, they were frozen. They were in my freezer. We keep these to the holidays. They're just, you have them. Oh. Typically, you'll wait a little while longer so that they're not too soft to unwrap. But and that's who what are they in like. there? What's wow. that in there? Right in there. And so this is uh, green bananas, yeah. yucca, oh. um, and she, it's like you make it with garlic in it. And in the center, you have uh, either pork or chicken. This one is pork with uh, galbanzos, um, chickpeas, mm -hmm. and seasonings. And then the, the meat is cooking pretty much all day. And then she wow. puts that in the, in the, uh, the wrapping. This is the banana leaf that we actually got from Puerto Rico, our aunt sent it to us. And I want Santa to try it. Santa. And, and we'll try it too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gina said it tastes very good with hot sauce. Oh, yes. Oh, so yeah. that, do you like hot sauce? Yeah. Do you have hot sauce? Yeah. So let's put some hot sauce on. Okay, well, we're going to take a picture of yes. us eating the pastels. I've been directed to. Uh, oh, wait, yes. It's gone. I don't see anything. Hold I know. On. One minute. We'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. All right. We're there. So we're going to put a little hot sauce. I love it with hot sauce. No, we'll eat them from right there. We just need some hot sauce. Okay. <laughs> You're going to use the uh, bamba sauce? The, no, no. That's Italian. The, the Italian uh, calabrese? No. No. <laughs> I know we're going to be doing a hot sauce. He's already eating. Wow. Yeah. Santa Claus is like. He's eating. I see <laughs> him. I got to taste it before I try the hot sauce on it. <laughs> oh, okay. This has meat in it. Yeah. Yes, of course. Of course. 
If you don't have it, fine. No, I do. Mm, delicious. Isn't that good? And so when you boil it, the important thing is that you have to have plenty of salt in that work. Because if you forget that, it's bland. Oh, yeah, I suppose. What kind of hot sauce? Jalapeno pepper. That's right. So I'll put it on the side so you can just dip it, dip in, it in. Yeah, if you like. Try that. I, I got you a fork. Um, did you try some? Or I'm going to right now. And what are the spices? So it's um or herbs. Never. Oh yeah, it's good with the hot sauce. With the hot sauce. Right? Mm. Mm. It feels like we're in San Juan. Mm -hmm. Delicious. So you guys? Really delicious. Nice. Thank you, Umaira. That, good stuff. Thank you, Umaira. That, that looks, looks amazing. Wow. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and Umaira, what did you say? Is this only this time of year that it's served, or is it for any holiday? It's usually Christmas time. Okay. Yeah. It's a very big holiday tra uh, Christmas tradition. Nice. <laughs> so since we like it, we agreed. We'll put it all over. So that's um, the pastel. So I figured I'd share that with you since it was already. Mm. Okay. Is that good? Delicious. Mm -hmm. Go to Puerto Rico. That's on our next. I was just there. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the difficult thing is that, you know, um, keeping up traditions over the generations. Yes. So people stop, people yes. stop cooking. Yes. Well, these are, these are labor intensive yeah, and a whole day, right? It's a whole day project. Um, yes. So we're working on video. I have a videotape of my mom making it so that my sister and I can practice because we can make it, but not this way. That's, that's a great idea. I also have in my memory, the hand motions of my grandmother <sighs> making, my grandmother made homemade bagels. She's a fantastic baker. Oh and, um, let me finish. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm holding out. And, uh, but I, it, it is very hard to carry on the traditions. Mm -hmm. And the food is very much part of all of our mm -hmm. cultural traditions, yeah. Yeah. all of them. Mm -hmm. So why don't you guys share with us yes. some of your, um, your holiday traditions? Yes, I'd love, like to to hear. love to hear. Well, for instance, I am from Vienna, Austria. Yes. And growing up, the tradition was that on Christmas Eve, we celebrate Christmas Eve, the Christ child comes on Christmas Eve. Right. And we eat fish. Oh, the seven so fish? It's still part of like uh, a fasting. But then on Christmas Day, we would have a goose. Oh. Yes. And with dumpling and all that stuff. And a little funny story. I got married and my husband said, let's have a goose for Christmas. This was the first Christmas and we had invited some people. I went to the local goose lady and I said, I want a young goose. Yes, yes, yes. This is a young goose. So I started cooking the goose and, you know, you put it in a pan. And you are supposed to poke the goose so that if there's any fat, it comes out. Right. And there was fat coming and fat coming and fat coming. You're supposed to take it out. I already had that picture that size for goose fat. And when the goose was finally done, there was hardly any meat. <laughs> <laughs> we mainly had fat. So that. Uh my husband had to run out and in Vienna at that time, you didn't have places to go and get, but he was able to get someplace, some chicken, uh, you know, and, and so these people said, oh, is that a goose? No, no, this is chicken. And that decided never, ever did I make another goose. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. That's so funny. That, any, anybody I, else have any traditions? Things you guys do? I wanted to share, because you were talking about saving to tradition. I have a, a, a very close friend of mine who's Polish, and his grandmother and his parents always made pierogies, and his aunt would carry it on this tradition. And till this day, she's in her 90s now, every year they have a pierogi-making weekend that they all come. There's probably like 40 of them now. And they make the pierogi sometime in November, I think, and then they just freeze them. And then they have them for Christmas. So I think it's great, like you say, videotaping. There's ways of keeping these traditions alive because it really is important and part of our cultural heritage for our family. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. You know, on pierogies, it was similar to what you're describing, Elaine. 
during one of the heights of COVID, um, the Polish community of Yonkers all got together in oh, the Ukrainian community, in the Ukrainian community center, which has a big kitchen. And all the, a lot of men, and they all made pierogies, and then they distributed them to seniors in oh, municipal nice. housing in Yonkers. Oh, that's I, nice. He came I in love the, that. Nice. That is a good idea. And they, but you know, it's nice to share our traditions with people who may not yeah. know them. Yeah, very so, true. So, you know, making pierogies and sharing with people who don't yeah. normally eat them is a wonderful thing. That really is. We you know, make in, in Vienna, we make something called vanille kipfel. That's a croissant shaped little pastry with vanilla and almonds, and oh. they're absolutely divine. And oh, we, yeah, it's part of the pastries, you know, cookies and so on that we, we always, I used to do this, not now anymore, but I used to do a lot of baking. Yeah, oh. that baking is such a wonderful thing. It really is, I love baking. Yeah. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, I wanted to ask uh, Shelly to maybe talk about some things going on in the Senate. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things that we're we're working on in Tuckahoe. Sure. So in Tuckahoe, you know, we're talking about keeping traditions and our history, you know, acknowledging our history and our heritage. And one of the things that we're working on is historic preservation. And so we will um, very likely pass legislation in January to um, safeguard our history in Tuckahoe and historic sites. So. We have our Historic Preservation Committee, for those of you who don't know, um, that we've just appointed. Elaine is clapping. <laughs> and uh, one of the, you know, Elaine, you want to talk about that? About the why Historic Preservation so Yeah, why you're so excited about yes, it. Yes, it's, um, it's, it's so important uh, that we're finally getting to recognize um, these fabulous historic places. There's so many historic places in Tuckahoe. Um, and uh, and unique. That's some of what's unique. There's a lot that's unique about Tuckahoe. So we're so grateful um, that the um, the Tuckahoe board is taking these measures to safeguard these local treasures. Thank you so much for what you're doing, so that all these future generations can enjoy them. Elaine, yeah. for instance, what would be one of those treasures? I, I'm well, in Tuckahoe. I, I have no idea what you're talking yes. about. Yes. Well, the Ward House up at the top of Winter yeah. Hill, yeah. the revolutionary uh, from the Revolutionary War period. Uh -huh. um, and we've got the um, Generoso Pope Foundation. Right, the Village got, Hall. Village we've Hall. got the Village Hall. I was going yeah. to say that next on May. That was the original Main Street School. We brought yeah. the Parkway Casino, the Masonic Temple. Yeah. Um, there are just so many, there are so many places in Tuckahoe um, and, and so many people don't know about them. So um, I'm also on the Tuckahoe History Committee. And just so you know that we have lots and lots of binders um, at the, at the, the uh, and, and online photos that if you're interested in that, you can yeah. contact us and come in and see, and see those. So okay. yeah. And the the history committee uh, on Facebook, they post so many wonderful oh, really? pictures of historic I sites. So. And they, I mean, they really do a nice job with that. I will include that information when I send out the recipes, just yeah. so you okay. could you know, see yes. what the history yes. committee is doing yes. as well. Thank um, you so much. One other great thing uh, was is that we are really promoting ourselves as a as a film friendly village. That's right. And so Very we well. have we just finished um, having uh, net what is it Netflix uh, the Watcher. Yeah, yeah, that's what nobody knew what it was. Yeah, so we're gonna we we need to get better at communicating that to the residents. So we're gonna be sending out emails and posting when we know we're gonna be filming, so that people know what's happening. But it's revenue for you. Uh, but you know, we brought in just so people know, one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in wow, in wow, fees and parking fees. Put, and this, put it on your bullet on your website, please. <laughs> Can you do that? Um, on our website, website, website yes. So we we do now have on our website. If you if you go on, we now have listed all the filming that's happened in Tuckahoe, so that people know that there have been we've been in films, and we're bringing in revenue that offsets taxes. Yes, so yes really, that's fabulous. And we've worked a lot with um, film and the films. and the library is in one of those films. Exactly. Oh, that's what wonderful. is it? Lizzie's story. Lizzie's story with Stephen King. Yes. Stephen King. Wonderful. So good stuff. And what's going on in the Senate? So. 
we're going back to uh, Albany at the beginning of January for the state of the state with our new governor, Governor Kathy Hochul. And um, she really is a breath of fresh air for those of us who fight on behalf of our constituents. And um, well, as you know, she imposed a mask mandate if, if everyone is not fully vaccinated in an indoor space, not a home. So for example, we don't have to be masked here today. We're in a private residence and we're vaccinated. And we happen to be vaccinated, so everyone. So, uh, but, uh, so, you know, that's caused some consternation, but the increase in the number of cases here in Westchester yeah. is something to be very mindful of. And so we're continuing to encourage, and I particularly as the chair of the education committee, encouraging kids who are eligible to get vaccinated and certainly kids, people who are eligible to get their booster. But on the big issues, one that really matters to Tuckahoe is in light of what happened during Ida and the impact on Ida, I'm, I'm proposing a number of really big changes to how the state deals with flooding and flooding preparedness. And one is to create an office of flood preparedness that would be at the governor's highest level, like reporting directly to the governor. Instead of all these different agencies that we're all dealing with, well, yeah, 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 yeah. and all the others, and it would also have best practices for flooding management. You know, many of us, including Tuckahoe, learned that our municipalities weren't sort of at the top of their game because we never had a flood like Ida before, and we're going to have more of them. So one is that. The second is where there are homes that are no longer habitable because of flooding to uh, find a program that allows municipalities to buy out someone's house, not to someone else could live there, but in my district, we have places that are really no longer habitable on a brook, on a stream. So that's the second thing. The third thing is to create a fund, and Omira and I have talked about this, that I'm proposing for people who lost so much, like in their basement, their first floor, and they had to buy a new freezer and a dishwasher or a washing machine and dryer, thousands of dollars spent, and maybe you got a little from FEMA if you were lucky. We're going to create a fund that I'm going to fight to that people can apply for so that there is some way to get some money back that you didn't get from FEMA and you didn't get from insurance. And that's the fourth thing. I'm, I'm working hard to get the states a regulator of insurance to think differently, to be advocates for people instead of just regulators. So instead of just approving rate increases and allowing insurance companies to not cover floods, to say, no, we have to have a better way of doing this because you don't know when you buy a house or you rent an apartment and you have homeowner uh, renter insurance that flood like we just had is not covered and you're not going to get anything and you've been paying these premiums. So we need to change that. And so today I had another call with them. I'm working on that. Uh, also for our schools, for Tuckahoe and obviously for East Chester, we're continuing to ensure that the money that was owed under the foundation aid formula continues to flow for another two years. And for Tuckahoe, and that also included expanded pre-K program for four-year-olds, this is a big deal and we're gonna continue to fight for that. And obviously for more uh, special services for kids as they deal with coming back after COVID, yeah. the social and emotional health of our kids from young to high school is really a challenge. And um, there is money, we just gotta make sure it gets out the door. I don't know, look at our time. <laughs> so that's some time. wonderful things you know, happening and we're trying to do all that we can to help you know, residents, definitely in Tuckahoe. I know for Shelly, you know, broader, a broader group of people, um, but there are some good things happening and it's good for you guys to know what's happening. I don't um, think it's totally done, but I defer to you. Um, it's probably fine. You know, for us now. Let's see. I'm gonna check on the sweet potato casserole. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put the... I thought that was the doorbell and people were staking you out after climbing oh, yeah. over to eat the food. No. They, heard they the should. Food. Uh, they should. They That's funny. Our delicious food and they were coming over. So do you want to show them uh, the brisket? Or yeah, I'm going to show the brisket. All right, so she's going to show us the brisket. And then I'm going to put it on a platter. So do you want to use this platter? Okay, sure. So here I will show you the best that you can get your camera down. Wow. So wow. I took it out. Oh, that's beautiful. I took it out and I um, took the fat oh, off. They that said, looks great. And um, 
It still has fat on it, but again, that really does make it good. Yeah. And nice. I'm going to put it on a, a little platter here. That's very nice. Looks you delicious. Go. Well, you're all welcome. Take this here. People ask me who is going to eat all this food, right? <laughs> like, where's so, Santa? Isn't he coming back? Yeah, yeah. Just remember, he's working. When, when you're cooking, a little tip: have a bowl next to you. You can put everything in there. When you're done, you just dump it, and it really does save you a lot of trouble. Okay. Yeah. And we're gonna take out the um, but the sweet potato casserole in a second. And we're gonna have our little drink, our celebratory holiday. And then we're gonna have a little drink. <laughs> oh, good. So so. Good. What are you drinking? <laughs> so we have a mix of a uh, bourbon with ginger beer. Oh, um, I really like that combination. Wow! And I happen to have ginger. She beer. happened to have it all here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And will you be including that uh, recipe for the? That's just to drink. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just like the parts, if you might want to. Oh, so the, 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 so it's about, like a punch, right? Yeah, so it's yeah. about six ounces. Well, we, we did six ounces of ginger beer to two ounces of bourbon. Nice. Um, you know, you can. Okay, they asked about you, Santa, and you're back. Is there any garnish in there with it? Uh, not in oh, this no, one. We have. No, we don't. Not, we have mint. I have used. Um, I don't have mint with me. I have used uh, rosemary or mint. Is that the brisket? Oh, that's lovely. Oh, Is that beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. We'll have uh, mm -hmm. And those are carrots on the side, shall we? Yes, yeah. yes carrots. Wow. Um, and it looks like it's, is it rosemary or thyme? So red, rosemary and thyme. That's gorgeous. How many hours did you cook it, Shelly? Three hours. About, well, I cooked it a little longer than that. Okay, a little longer than three hours. But that is, I so wish we could share this with you. One day we will in person again. Yes, we will. Until now, um, I think we're not okay. One minute. No, no, we're not. We're not going to eat it now. <laughs> no. I think we should try for like a summer cook off. You know, maybe next summer. See if we that can have like a summer cook off because we can do it outside. We could do it outside. Have tables. Yeah, that would be yes. really fun. I would volunteer to cook something Austrian. Okay. All right. Yeah, we we want to try that that. Uh, Special base now, I normally, um, Shelly, just so you know, when I do our, my cooking classes, I always have a surprise dessert, right? I don't have a surprise dessert today. Sorry, guys. Because uh, then, who can, then who's going to eat it? Like, I would, I'm going to go home. There's no dessert. I, I, would, <laughs> I would do a surprise dessert if um, we were all together because then everybody could share. But the last time I did a surprise dessert, I ate it all. <laughs> That's not a good idea. What's that special cake you make, Omara, that everybody that loves? Is almond cake. Oh, almond, it. yes. Almond cake, yeah. So how about this idea? During summertime, if we do cooking around the world. So we have an outside in our parking lot so everybody can bring whichever they want to party. That's a wonderful day, uh, a wonderful idea. I got one of the residents contacted me and said, can we have an international day? So yes, let's, let's right. go for it. That's, yeah. That'd be great. We'll put it on the calendar. We'll put it in pencil and in for summer program. Okay. A good idea. Yes. Okay, I'm going to take the sweet potato out now. Okay. Watch him. He's eating everything. He's oh, eating yeah. everything. <laughs> wow. Uh, yes, yeah, so Emily is asking if you could share, if you could include the almond cake recipe, Omira, when you get me the recipe, that'd be great. I can do that. So, I mean, you guys can, won't be able to see it much, but it looks beautiful. Oh, beautiful. wow. I'll be right over. What's on top? Even if it really is. Yeah. Huh? Okay. What, is that a crumb? That is a like, um, pecan, brown sugar, um, flour with butter, melted butter. And that's it. It, it, it could cook a little longer, but it's fine. We're going to eat it like as is. And then we're gonna to we're gonna do a little toast with our drink. Yes, where's the little cup? Here Before we um, uh, and I left you an additional one, Santa. Okay. So you can heat up at any time. That's nice. In half. You want a big plate or a small plate? This is a sweet small potato. Plate. Sweet potato. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of sweet potatoes. Try that. This one really <laughs> looks 
Wow, 50 years. So cheers. Cheers, cheers. 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 Yeah. Lee, do you want a cup? No, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Beautiful. I'm good. I'm good. He's like, I'm waiting for the food. I'm going right? to the gym in a little while. I don't want to drink. <laughs> I would ruin my ambition. So that's it, guys. That's our holiday. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you everyone. I want to thank Shelly for opening up her home to us. My pleasure. For all of us. She, yes. I, I told. I remember the first time I met Shelly. It was at the Martin Luther King breakfast yes. in 2018, yes. and I, you know, I said to her, "I am. I'm considering running for village trustee." And she said, "Do it because you're going to win." And so she became my best friend in my head that day. Anything <laughs> I can do. I, I was there. I met you that day too, Shelly. Yeah, I think I, you sat with me actually. I think I did too. Yes, like, with my husband and I. Absolutely. I think we were all together. Me, That's right. So I should be there too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The library table. Yeah. Yes. We all sat together. Right. I look forward to having another one this February. So, we Carmela, thank you. Um, Merry Christmas to you and good Carmella. night. Merry Christmas. Good night. Thank Zane, you. Everyone. Thank you. Diane, thank, thank you, everybody, you. for coming, and thank you, Shelly and Omara, for a wonderful program. And Santa, we don't want to forget you. You're thank you for that <laughs> wonderful taster. And yes. we will be getting the recipes and sending them out. Um, you know, and don't forget the almond cake recipe as well, yes. and the punch. Elaine, just send me an email. You know, the brain. I will. I will. <laughs> everybody have a wonderful holiday and a happy holiday. Thank you for joining thank us tonight. Thank you, Shelly. Thank, thank you, Myra. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, everyone. Happy holidays.